Hi, everybody. I am excited to be here with Suzanne Kohlberg. And uh, we're going to be talking about a topic that I think a lot of us um, deal with, which is over giving and how that affects both our business as well as our health and our weight. Um, because Suzanne is, well, I'll, I'll go into your bio, Suzanne. I just want to first say hi, welcome. Thank you for doing this. Hi, George. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, let me read your bio so that people can have sort of this official background and then we'll get into this very important topic, overgiving boundaries, how that affects business, our, our, you know, our health, our weight, et cetera. So here we go. Uh, Suzanne is a mindset coach for weight loss. And Suzanne, I, I remember you used to say weight release, you know? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. talk about that later, but yes. Yeah, we'll talk about, yeah, okay. So your mindset coach for weight loss or weight release, she believes people often gain too much weight because they give too much to help others, okay? They give too much to uh, help to others. They overeat because they overgive. The solution is to deal with the pattern of overgiving, not the pattern of overeating. Deal with the overgiving and the food issues will largely take care of themselves. I mean, that's a paradigm shifting idea right there. Suzanne's passion is fueled by her own weight journey from going from 150 kilograms, which I looked up, it's about 330 pounds, 330 pounds, uh, to maintaining the 72 kilograms she is now, which is, you know, 150-ish pounds, which is amazing. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> Suzanne uses a mix of modalities, including NLP, neuro neurolinguistic programming, hypnosis, and energy healing, uh, and plenty of um, wisdom that you share and kind of mindset changes to give your clients the accountability to create lasting change. Awesome. Well, welcome to you. Um, so uh, just before we started recording, I mean, we were, we were, I was like, okay, this, this could be a three hour conversation. This is so good, but let's start with this connection between, I want you to start with the connection between overgiving and overweight and then we can get into why people overgive and how that even shows up in their business as well. So I'll let you start wherever you like. Thank you. So very quickly, because you picked up the weight loss thing and the weight release thing. Yes. It's people, when they're in my world, I explain my personal aversion to the term loss because in no other area do we actually want to lose anything. Um, but people understand that they didn't understand weight release. But at the core of it, the way I do weight loss or weight release is people know what to do. They, they know what to eat. They know how to exercise. Um, but there's something that's not going well. They make the plans, you know, and then they overgive. Somebody needs them. Somebody asks them for help, whether it be children, partner, friends, colleagues, uh, fellow entrepreneurs. So then they kind of give and they burn out. And then they overconsume. In, in my world, most of the people is food because that's my background. But it could be, you know, Candy Crush, apps, uh, Netflix, alcohol. Um, then they feel guilty and they make the plans again. So they end up in this overgiving cycle and not making any traction towards their goals. And it's very similar. And what we were talking about before we jumped on is this struggle. What if the struggle with business is because you overgive? To me, it's the same logic. You know what to do in your business. You've bought the courses. You've downloaded them. You've got them all clean and pretty and ready to write in the, in the manual or whatever, but you don't go through with them. Why? Because you're always giving to other people. You're always supporting other people instead. Wow. And I love it. And you also mentioned uh, before we started recording this thing about information versus integration. Maybe you could just briefly mention that. Yeah, totally. So we think... We need more information, whether it be weight or business, because mm. we haven't had the results that we know we're capable of, that we've seen other people have. So we're like, okay, it must be the next course or the next diet or the next coach or the next mentor. So we're really hungry for information. And so we go and buy the things and then we don't actually take the time to integrate it, to apply it, because sometimes it's like we have this, mindset it's like there's nothing new here you know so we don't even really take it in and we don't realize it's because someone else has asked oh can I just have five minutes can I pick your brain can I ask you about this and be and not saying don't help people but we don't realize how much of our time gets eaten away um with with the over helping 
and then we're kind of tired because we've given so much to everybody else that we're feeling drained and we fill up with food, Netflix, something else, and then think, oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Or it mustn't have been the right course. It has to be the next thing. So the information, like we're in an information overload at the moment. It's taking the time to integrate it, to get the transformation. That's the missing piece for so many of us. That's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you, whoever is watching this right now or listening to this, is watching or listening <laughs> shows that you you love consuming information and consuming information feels very subtly and it's 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 an illusion but it feels like you're getting something done yes right? it feels like okay i'm learning well learning can't be bad learning is part of the growth journey and of course it is but as i always say it too it's like the best way to learn is through experience through action and the, as you say, brilliant through integration. Okay, so I, I mean, thus far, I've, I've, so I, so basically, what I'm all, what I'm saying to you all is, let this be the last video you watch today, <laughs> and then you go and do right. Like this should be the last video you watch today, and then you go and do, do whatever it is is uh, is, is you know is helpful for your business or for your health, etc. But let's get back to, I mean, you you coach, you've been coaching. How how many years have you been coaching people on this um, weight? Four now. This is my fourth yeah. year. Yeah, but just, I just want to interrupt there, but something that you sure, said, George, sure. something um, landed. Sometimes when we buy a course um, and the perfectionist in us is like, because I can't do it perfectly, because I can't do all of it, I'll just listen. I'll listen through it once and then I'll come back. And we don't because by then we've gone on to the next course. Or if there's a part of it that we don't want to apply, it doesn't resonate with us or whatever. We're like, because I'm not going to do these steps one to ten, what if the part of the course, you only need step six? Do you know what I mean? So sometimes we, we hold ourselves back or we hamstring ourselves because we're not doing it in the exact way. For me, for any course I do now, I think what's the one thing I got from this? Because I don't necessarily have the time or the inclination to apply every single thing in the exact way. But if that one piece of information was the piece I needed and then I can move on, I think that frees a lot of us from, I call it, um, we're almost like digital dragons hoarding our gold of courses. You know, it's like I got this piece and it was enough. And I think that's where many of us come unstuck because we didn't apply at all. We feel like we failed. Well, Suzanne, I do expect that you apply all of my spreadsheets though, right? <laughs> that's, oh, I'm going to check on your hard drive later or whatever, your Google drive. No, thank you. This is so good. Um, so those of you watching, I think you can tell that Suzanne is is very experienced in helping people with this stuff. And uh, so, okay, I want to get. But back. I'm not very experienced with spreadsheets. Oh, but not, no, <laughs> Still, no. you can you can work with the you can work with the the, the mindset stuff that helps people. So, um, so so I think probably some people are still reeling from what we just said in the beginning, which is how overgiving is connected to being overweight. How over how 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 overgiving is connected to overconsuming, right? Which is which is really. But please let's let's flesh this out a little bit more because I feel like if people walk away today with that idea and to really understood it and and to start to integrate it, hopefully we can start to recognize that within our own lives, and to see the connection and just to to, to the awareness of of that dynamic will hopefully help us to start healing that you know or that bit or break that vicious cycle so so when did you I, I i don't i mean i don't you don't necessarily need to go through the whole origin story but i'm just really curious like i mean honestly i it makes sense once you say it but it's like i don't hear enough people saying it, or maybe you're the only person i hear who's who said it i mean you say it so succinctly so how did this come about like yeah i didn't realize this pattern until after i had healed my weight it actually, the, the point for me that where it hit me in the face was when I realized my business journey was mirroring my weight journey um, and the ways that I overgave in business, like I was burning out because um, I was going over time with appointments. Um, if people were turning up to the session late, I was not finishing on time. I was going over to make up for the fact that they had come late and I didn't call them on it. Um, I was letting people cancel at the last minute with no consequence. Like I wasn't charging them. I was letting them just book it back in. Um, I was messenger coaching. Like people would 
send me an inquiry and I would write back and they would write back. And I worked through this with you, George, over a year ago. It was exhausting. Like I was, I was constantly on my messenger and I didn't really, it was my kids who kind of picked me up on that because I was only half listening to them. Um, I didn't have clear boundaries with my one-on-one -on -one versus my groups. I started a group, which I love and I still have, um, but I, I'm, I'm sure nobody was nefarious. And if any of my clients are watching this, I love you all dearly. And I'm sure it wasn't your intention. And I've take my responsibility for this, but if you could get somebody at a significant cheaper rate and get the same deal, why wouldn't you? So, you know, I wasn't clear. Yeah. So people were downgrading from one-on-one -on -one to my membership. So my, my money that was coming in was going through the floor, but I was doing more work. You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, people would message me and go, can I just pick your brain? And I didn't know how to say no. So I was getting on Zoom cuppers and stuff. And there was one day where I was just, I was at a really low point And I was like, maybe I should just quit my business and go and get a job. I'm not cut out for this. And someone sent me a pick your brain message. So I sent them a link to my one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, here you go, book a session. You know, it felt like huge for me. And they wrote back and they go, well, I don't want to lose weight. I just want to ask you about stuff. I'm like, so you just want my time? Like I kind of, I got a little bit resentful and I realized that like I was reading um, a Brene Brown book at the time and she has this quote that's now like my mantra, clear is kind. And I couldn't get resentful at people who were not respecting my boundaries when I wasn't clear about what they were. So it became this really murky, messy thing. And, you know, I had to say, so I, I did a thing and I, spoke to all my clients and I said look I'm owning my part in this I have um, I have done this so it's, it's not to blame or anything but going forward here is my client agreement because I've always had a client agreement I've got a legal agreement but I haven't upheld it so I was like sessions will start and finish on time you know sessions are cancelled under 24 hours will still be charged I just like I, I went through a metamorphosis like the butterfly coming out and it did upset a lot of people and I did lose a lot of clients but I found myself again. I could spend time with my kids. Um, and then new people came in and people actually came to me and they come to me now and they're like, I love your work because of how clear you are. And I love the boundaries and people feel safe. We're worried that if we set boundaries, people will be upset with us or people will be this. But when people don't know and then they're overstepping and then we get frustrated and we kind of rip their heads off you know, inadvertently, like no wonder they, they feel the pushback. But if you're really clear and then they're like, well, I don't want to work with someone like that. That's great. They don't have to come into the container to start with. So it was from understanding this through my business that I realized I'd done the same thing with my weight. And it all kind of got really clear with this, where I thought I was helping. I was actually enabling people. My gosh. Okay. I, I'm going to be time stamping the last few minutes and sharing that with my clients because that's, that was, that was really, really helpful. I mean, and you're, I mean, it just all came out of you because it's coming out of your own, your, your lived experience. That's why it's, it's, it's like, you're, you're just talking, well, this is what happened and, and you learn from it. Um, do you, uh, maybe a little bit tangent, do you, if someone said, Suzanne, I'd like to get your coaching on the boundary stuff. Is that something you provide? Yeah, totally. Okay. It's, it's it, I don't like publicly do it, but sometimes I, the boundaries thing it's clear the business thing it's kind of like yeah the startup thing it's, it's huge it's a yeah. huge journey and, it's huge um people yeah i totally do that okay because i i want to encourage those watching if you have been finding this revelatory um it will be life-changing really to actually integrate this stuff into your day-to-day -day and working with suzanne may be helpful for that um I, so this is so good because I actually noticed that I actually keep really good boundaries. I don't know how it started happening maybe over time. And part of it is that I'm very much um, a J on the Myers-Briggs, very, very J. Sorry. So I'm very good at, <laughs> well, spreadsheets, calendars. I like putting things into boxes, which also means time into boxes. And it's like, hmm, nope, you're not allowed to email me. You know, and it's interesting because I actually don't have a client agreement, as you well know, I don't have a contract or an agreement that people sign, but because I somehow communicate my boundaries and I'm, I'm gonna have to start noticing this 
And those of you watching who know, know me, know my work and start to say, well, yeah, you communicated this way or that way. I'd be curious. It's like somehow I communicate it. It's like, so, it's like such a natural part of me. And I assume that everybody does. But you are so right that actually I would say most of the people, well, I would say probably, probably half, maybe more than half of the clients I work with probably don't have good boundaries. I think, I think especially because I attract the people into my audience who are, who are more caring who want to be authentic, which means that they want to be more expressive of who, what their soul really is, which, which can be um, go into the whole go, go with the flow thing, which can be poor boundaries. It's like, it's like there's a lot of relationship between all that. But let's get back to, let's go, let's get back to this. So um, you've just, you've listed a, a couple of ways we can all start to notice how we're, we don't keep good boundaries. But then how does that relate then to overconsumption? Well, it, it kind of happens that, I know it's a cliche, but you know, they say give from the overflow. And I was like, I remember reading that. I was like, what's this overflow? I don't even feel like I have dregs, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But like when we do, are uh, unable to say no, and we give a lot, we do end up depleted in, in ourselves. And the way that, I, I myself and the people I work with fill up that depletion is usually with eating. So by the end of the day, when you've, you, you burn out and you've overgiven, you just stay up late watching TV because that's your time and mindlessly eat or mindlessly play games and watch TV and eat and have ice cream and, you know, like all this stuff because you've given and given and given. And, you know, this is, the this is the only way you know how to receive. And it needs to be a balance. You can't constantly give without a receive. Like a door swings, you know, in and out, open and closed. So when we give so much, that is the only way that we know how to take back. Even though in the back of our mind, we're screaming, I don't want to do this. I want to go to bed. I want to be rested. I want to eat well. I value my health. But it's just, you've gone past that point, like where you're just in the dregs. And it's, it's kind of this pushback. It's really hard to articulate, but people who experience it, they'll know. They're just like, I, I need to switch off my brain and all this stuff just, you know, and then you feel guilty. And this is the real crux of it. I think when we feel resentful of our clients or our family or our children, we don't like to feel that way. We're caring and loving people. And that is not a nice place to be. So when we overconsume then we feel guilty and that's very self-directed. I'm much more comfortable being mad at myself than being mad at anybody else. But actually now that I have these boundaries and I can say to people like that's a no, like a clear no or a not right now, some people do get affronted, but then they'll just go and ask someone else. Like there's always going to be, as horrible as it sounds, some sucker who will do something for them. So it's kind of like I don't have that getting to that stage anymore because I can say no. Whereas before I felt so bad and I wanted to help, but I didn't really help people. I only enabled them. And the more I said, yes, the more they asked, it became this weird kind of codependency. And then I was like, why am I not getting anywhere? <laughs> you know? yeah. So I think sometimes the overeating, the overconsuming comes in because we feel bad about it and that's directed to self. And that's easier mm -hmm. for us to process than yes. for us to feel resentful. This is so good. And as you say, it's so funny because I think in the working world or just in, well, not just the working world, I feel like in the normal modern human world, we have this language of I got to decompress or I have to um, just veg out and just sit on the couch, veg out usually means stuffing our face in some way or stuffing our face with media and with, or with food or with other substances or whatever. And like you said, apps as well, you know, playing video games or whatever is so easy now to, to be able to just addict us. It's like, in other words, it's like we work hard all day and then we get into our addictions because that somehow is supposed to fill us up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I and, think and, the but, way but, but, out of that yeah. is, and it's not recognized in, in Western culture, at least not in Australia and I don't think in America and yeah. stuff, is to give pockets to ourselves during the day. Like before we started, you were talking about having your nap and I love that. Because why do we work all day and relax all night? It's almost like, why do we work our whole lives and then not relax till we retire? What, why is that? Like, why can't we have a nap? Why can't we go for a walk? Why can't we read a book? 
not all day, like that's seen as like lazy, but these receptive pockets during the day where we take 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes and give to ourselves throughout the day. So in the evening, we're not into the dregs and then needing this frenetic relax on the couch, over consume because we've gotten so drained. Yeah, this is so good. Um, my goodness, we only have a few minutes left. And uh, I, yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation and I hope those who are watching this, finding this helpful will reach out to you and um, knowing that you keep good boundaries and to schedule a session <laughs> with you uh, or to join your, um, why wait? Okay, so, so okay, there's, there's two types of people here watching this. Uh, one who um, do would like to work on their weight issues. Um, and Suzanne is a fantastic coach for, for, for doing that. Obviously your why weight program, weight is W8, the number eight. So why weight, why weight program is, is designed for that. Um, but you can also do mindset coaching with people who recognize themselves in the conversation we're having about overgiving and boundaries. And so um, whichever type of person you are, contact Suzanne. Um, but I, I want to ask you one more thing uh, before sure. we go, which is um, I, I sometimes hear people say, yes, I, I was working with a client who, who's now a friend. <laughs> I, I hear that a lot. Client who's now a friend. And like, it makes me worried because it's like, what does that mean? Does that mean you now feel obligated to help them outside the client relationship? And what does that mean for your boundaries? But do you want to, do you want to say anything about that? <laughs> this is a very challenging um, thing. And it's something mm -hmm. I face because as kind, heart-centered, caring entrepreneurs, we often befriend our clients, but we need to be really clear. So for me, um, there's ways people can contact me. So if people are my friends, they can send me a text message or they can send me a messenger thing. But if they're a client, I use Voxer. So there's the different ways. And then, or if we're not sure um, and they work with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, at the beginning of the message, like, is it a friend message or is it, a, is it a, a business message? Like, I need that clarity. And sometimes I'll say, because sometimes you just want to vent to a friend. You don't want them to coach you. Do you know what I mean? So there's being very clear. And then this is going to sound really funny, but anyway, it is what it is. We have like a safe word. So it's like, if, if it's, if this is going to go, if this is going to risk the friendship, we say the word and then we absolve the coaching relationship because I value my friends. Um, I can get lots more clients, but you know, friends first. So there's some people who that, that has happened to, and I won't coach anymore and it will start to look that and I need to hold the boundary and say, you know, this is something that you need to work with, with a coach, uh, not me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because really good. Then, That's really true. When we are coaches, we end up, Very good. you know, inadvertently and that can, it can harm both parts of the relationship. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, which answer do you want? A friend answer or a coach answer? Or yeah. um, in which way are you going to contact me so that I know? And then even when you're in session, yeah. sometimes... I'll, I'll make the session hour 15. We'll spend 15 minutes catching up, chatting. That's our mm. friend time. Right. Then that's closed on that. And now we're in session wow. because I'm very clear that I don't want people to feel like I paid her all this money and all we did was chat about her kids. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. This um, is really so good. I, I think people can work with you on this if they have that yeah, issue. It's a conversation a lot of you need do. to have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really good. Suzanne, this has been great. Of course, your links are below whenever, wherever people are watching this, it's either below or above the video. Just look for the links to Suzanne's stuff. Contact her. You can see that, you know, she could probably help you if you have the, the boundaries or overgiving uh, that's leading to all the stuff. But Suzanne, thank you so much for the work that you do, the way that you do it. And thanks for this conversation. Thanks for having me, George.